Right, we're here in Shirkuk uh, this morning in the hall, and we're joined by a number of parents, and they have a dilemma. It's all surrounding bus transport, and I know you're rushing away and you want to get away, but we'll talk to you first. Your name is? Sharon Lynch. Sharon Lynch. In a few words, can you tell us the dilemma that you have with bus transport for the, your students here in Shirkuk area? So we're, we're here on behalf of uh, 14 students. There's 14 students who have been left um, in limbo. Uh, they were all uh, enrolled in Colosh de Dunery in Kingscourt and they all applied for a bus ticket with Bus Aaron. We all paid our money and we were all told that unfortunately uh, your concessionary ticket does not get you a seat, there's not enough seats on the bus and your money will be repaid. So we're just wondering what they, they want us to do next. And it's amazing, it's not a question of money you're paying, you, you have your money paid and uh, it's a dilemma for you, but it's also traumatic because you have enough to contend with getting uniforms sorted and getting pupils back to school or starting college for the first time. Exactly, it's a very, it's a very busy and expensive time of year and we have, um, we have paid out and if they, you know, they want to add more expense to us by putting on private buses or, you know, we just, it's, it's not on, it's not fair. We feel that our children should get the same rights as uh, the children at the other end of the town. I live at the bottom of the town. That is the, the nonsense of this. If you're at one end of the town, can you tell me that scenario? Yeah, so we have, um, we have friends and cousins at one end of the town and they have their ticket and their child's getting on the seat and then... Uh, 200 metres, 300 metres up the town. Up the town and then at the bottom of the town uh, where I live, uh, we have a concessionary ticket because there's 500 yards difference between uh, how far it is from my house to Kingscourt and their house to Kingscourt. They get a full seat and I get a concessionary seat. And because the bus is full with full seats and then the lotto for the concessionary seats, so I'm sure there's a few concessionary seats on in it, I did ask how are they allocated and it's just a lottery system. Oh, I didn't know that even introduces another equation into the system. There's so many dilemmas and equations in this that to, to, to even remember them all uh, is, is the rules and regulations, the boundaries, paying the money, getting your money back. Um, trying to get somebody to talk to about it, um, you know, uh, not being able to get in touch with the right person because there's so many layers in bus airing. And if you were sitting in front of the minister today, tomorrow, what would you say to him? I'd just like to say that in this day and age that I think that a child should be entitled to go to a school if they're choosing and the solution is easy, just put on a bigger bus. These rules and regulations and red tape that uh, is around the system is crazy and our children basically should not be discriminated against and it's, it's, the parents can do without the drama and the stress at this time of year. Thanks for the clarity you brought to the situation for us this morning, explaining it to our viewers. I know you're rushing away, and thanks very much. Thank you. And now we turn to Tara, your second name, Tara? McCabe. McCabe. Can you explain from your point of view what you'd like to see done? Well, my daughter's going into her second year into King's Court. We had a she already has had a ticket. She had a ticket last Dunery year. Dunery College. Dunery College in King's Court. Although we were concessionary last year, we're concessionary again this year. But this, obviously, because King's Court is a new school, there's children going, the numbers are going to change every year until the school is full. It's only going into its fourth year now, so there's still another two years after this till the school is full. So they don't know how many seats they need on the bus. So now this year, my daughter faced the dilemma of possibly changing schools. She was devastated. You know, if she can't get a bus to King's Court, what else are we supposed to do? And have they given you any indication if you change to another secondary school, you might get a ticket? Well, we're eligible, but it's too late now. I mean, oh, right. most, of, most people, especially the ones that were just starting out this first year, they paid for, and looked for a ticket back in April. And they only tell us two weeks before the school starts back. What do they expect us to do? If, at least if they'd said this, I don't agree that it would be right either. But at least if they told us back in uh, June or July, we might have been able to sort something before now. But two weeks before they start back. It's not fair. How traumatic can it be, uh, your... Uh, daughter, is it? Yeah. Yeah, she, going into her second year and meeting all her friends and all and all this turmoil and upset. Well, that's it. She even said, you know, her a lot of her friends are still going on the bus, so she she has to find another way to school. And you know, although the bus isn't really about having fun and making new friends, that's what happens too. They do have a bit of fun and make new friends and have stories from the bus. And now she doesn't even know how she's going to get into school. But normally you start your secondary school life and you stay in that college and you make friends and progress on to university or whatever or careers or onto apprenticeships. 
and now it's all been interrupted with this scenario. Well, this is it. And the school that they're saying my daughter is eligible for, there's only about a kilometre difference, you know, between my house and that school and my house and, and Kings, Kings Court. We pay taxes just like anybody else. Why shouldn't we be entitled to get our child on the bus? And there's a bus going to Kings Court and it comes from Shercocky and it's bringing pupils to a school in Carrickman Cross and it's three quarter empty, you tell me. Well, there's, there's maximum 10 children on the bus, maximum, you know, and it's 52 seater. So, you know, it's empty the rest of the way to Kings Court. So they could take our children and drop them right at the door. That could be seen as a temporary solution. It wouldn't be seen as a long-term solution, but that's something that might sort this out for this term. It is temporary because apparently that bus is only going to be running for another two years. So again, King's Court isn't even full yet. So what happens the next couple of years as more and more children attend? My son is due to hopefully go in King's Court next September, but that's no guarantee now either. Thank you very much, Tara. Now we're joined by, your name is? Uh, Jane Ritchie. Jane. You have a dilemma and you've had lots of communications with uh, a minister and different TDs and uh, been on to the department and I don't think there's anybody knows the situation in more inside out than you do. Yes, <clears throat> I, um, my, ch my children go to Carbra Central School, um, like St. Patrick's here in Shercock. It's a feeder school yeah. to um, Doonery. Uh, last October when I was at the opening evening in Doonery, there was an email address to contact Bus Aaron. Um, my children, I have three children going to Cabra School, um, it's a national school, they are on three eligible tickets. Um, my Dunery school is just up the road from Cabra School. I assumed that if I had eligible tickets for Cabra National School, that I have eligible tickets for Colosh to Dunery. Well, it wasn't as simple as that. I decided just to double check, so I emailed the address that was on Dunery that night to Bus Aaron. I did that four times from the end of November to the beginning of December. Each time I got an email back saying my query was being dealt with and someone would be in touch soon. Uh, they never got in touch. And then by the end of December, uh, the acceptance form came out for Colosh to Dunery. Uh, we accepted it in the knowledge that we would be fairly sure of an eligible ticket. I got on to Heather Humphreys as well, our local TD. Uh, I asked the minister her, well, Minister Heather that. Humphreys, I asked her, could she find out all I wanted, basically what I asked in the email, where is our local school? It was a very simple question. Because like these other ladies, I'm in a triangle of three or four different schools. And like everything in this process, there was no simple answer forthcoming? Well, Minister Humphreys, it took her a considerable length of time to find out from Bus Aaron as well. Um, when she finally did find out, they told me, uh, no, Coutil, St. Aidan's Comprehensive and Coutil was our local school. At this stage, we had accepted Colosh to Dunery. She advised me that concessionary tickets were available. So we decided to stay where we were and use the concessionary ticket. When I went to apply in April on CIE, when I put in my preferred school, it came up that my local school wasn't Coutil. What they told Minister Humphreys, it was Bailey Community School. I got back on to Minister Humphreys and she got back on to them and they said, no, it's Bailiwick Community so to give her um, wrong knowledge about it. So you were on a bit of a merry-go-round at this stage? Yes, but now I'm at the dilemma that my child is enrolled in Colosh Dunery. I have two other children coming along as well. Um, I have no transport to Colosh Dunery and all I would ask for um, is we have, I paid my 350 euros of no problem paying it. All I'd ask for if any feeder school that is a feeder school to Colosh to Dunery or any school in Ireland why can't they get on at the designated point for the rest of the children in, that's a, if you're a feeder school you must provide transport getting on at the designated point and I can't understand why Bus Aaron won't um, first of all why they didn't get back to me to tell me where the school was to give me uh, an inclination where I should go. The other problem is, is for parents in every school over the country, where is their local school? First time parents don't know these things. And if they don't tell you, how are you supposed to pick a school? Do you see the problem being solved before your uh, child has to go back to no. secondary or go to start secondary school? Sorry. No, I don't think they will because there's so many layers in bus airing, but there's no one really to talk to you. The bus inspector has many different um, layers of authority over him. And if he can't get an answer, how can a parent like me or anybody else here get an answer? And if they can't tell Minister Humphreys or any other TD that emails a simple question, 
um, I, I can't see it being resolved anytime soon. That's great. And we just bring yourself over. Your name again is Jennifer McAvoy. Jennifer. Well, after listening to the three parents here and your parent yourself. Yes. How, how do you see this was being resolved? Well, you have to really look at where Shercock is. It's in it's in equidistance from around four towns. Um, we don't have our own secondary school. We're probably many of many like many rural towns. We don't have a secondary school. We rely on secondary schools in neighboring towns. Between 13 and 15 kilometers, you can attend six different secondary schools around around Shercock. Yeah. So. A cousin can be going to one school, another cousin can be going, a friend, a neighbor even. So Even family members maybe, if you follow the, the trend that's yes. been set here, you could have one child, maybe your son in one college and maybe your daughter starting another college. Um, there are families who actually have children who are going to multiple secondary schools because it suited their personalities and the, the traits of that child and right. they thought it would be the best environment for yeah. them. So, so we have a dilemma here in Shercock, particularly with these bus errand rules. Um, we know the easy solution, which I would say the 6,000 children across the country who don't have concessionary tickets is throw more money at the system and get a bigger bus. And we do know, you know, that is most likely not going to happen. We did offer us, we came up with a secondary solution ourselves and proposed it to four local TDs and the headmaster who have passed on this information. And that is, as we mentioned previously, Earlier. about the larger bus that's already traveling from Shokok to Kings Coast. Yeah, another public school bus that pass, it starts at our bus stop 10 minutes earlier and pass, goes on our route and passes the gates of our school with 40 empty seats. So you could end up with a convoy of cars or carpooling driving behind a bus that's empty. three quarter empty yes. all the way to Kingscourt and the pupils, maybe the few the sonic could be waving out of you, the back of the exactly. bus. It, and it, it, exactly. It seems like some type of comedy. It, it does. It doesn't seem like, you know, it, it seems like maybe... Um, Innovative problem solving hasn't really come into play with this system. That's yeah. my my opinion looking in as a parent who's in the situation where I said, well, you can put, there's 40 empty seats going straight up the road, and my daughter, who's a third year and has had a seat for two years already, um, can be put onto that bus. It's amazing that she's already been in the Dunery for two years. Yes. And now this uh, obstacle has been put in the way. Exactly. It, it was a brand new school. Um, a lot of us took a leap of faith, and she was one of she was the second year of pupils to go attend that school. The building wasn't even built at that time; they were in temporary um, school housing, and she thrived in that environment. And you now, because of that choice of bringing, you know, being part of that new exciting school, I feel like we're being penalized. And there's a lot of people doing a lot of work. The principal, uh, Mr. Boyle, up there, his first name again is... Fergal. Fergal Boyle, just escaped me for a moment, Fergal. And, of course, local councillors, Clifford Kelly and different people like that. And uh, Brendan TDs. Smith, Neve Smith and Heather Humphreys yeah. have all been helping us. And yes. everybody writing and emailing and phoning. Exactly, but, you know, we write an email and we get this automated response and we really haven't gotten any indication whether, you know, a week a week from now if our child will be able to get on a bus. Yeah, so it's like robots sending back uh, exactly. responses, all automated, and nobody seems to follow up, and there's no clarity being brought to the situation. No, it, and it, it's not all about money, because everybody's prepared to pay for the ticket. Well, yeah, we all, we pay the, the full 350 euros at the beginning of uh, July um, into the system in good faith that we will have a ticket, and then um, I, have a, I haven't gotten a refund either, so... We're sitting here, um, you know, no ticket, no refund. Do you think that, uh, uh, is it your daughter? Yes. Yeah, that she'll be on the on a bus to Dunery eventually, that it may be sorted, or can you see any light at the end of this tunnel? Current indication, I see, I see no light. I need, you know, we, we keep getting letters that say, we're working on it, we're, you know, we're considering, we're reviewing your case. But I could see that dragging on for weeks and weeks.
We're here in the hall. This is St. Patrick's Hall, isn't it, in Shirkock? And it's a great home of drama and uh, productions over the years, and there'll be drama festivals held here, and great ju judging for many decades, in fact. Maybe there's the makings of a new drama. Somebody might write it about school transport in Kingscourt and how to get to your local college. Ladies, you've been brought great clarity to the situation. Hopefully, clarity will be forthcoming from elsewhere. This is Sean McMahon reporting for the Anglo-Celt in Shawcock.